My name is Donna Ocampo, co-founder of D&D Nursing Educators. For the past decade, my colleagues and I have helped prepare nursing graduates across the country for their NCLEX. Our NCLEX review specialists are current nurse educators, clinicians, and advanced practice nurses. A combination of our experience, passion, and dedication to innovative teaching strategies allows us to provide extraordinary NCLEX review experiences. We will be launching a series of presentations highlighting some of our NCLEX candidates' favorite topics. We will call these NCLEX Review Concepts in Minutes. Make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our Vimeo and YouTube channels so you can receive our latest presentations as they are released. You are now done with school and prepare for your NCLEX. Books are piled up and notes are scattered everywhere. Now where do you begin? What will they ask you on the exam? A great place to start is familiarizing yourself with the NCLEX test plan. This complete test blueprint can be found at the NCSBN website. Unlike how you were tested in your nursing programs, the NCLEX does not test based on traditional categories of subject matter like medical surgical nursing, maternal newborn, pediatrics, psych, and foundations. Rather, the NCLEX tests your ability to recognize and meet the client's needs across all the disciplines. The NCLEX PN and the NCLEX RN has four categories. The first category is safe and effective care. This assesses your ability to provide a safe care environment that will facilitate healing. It is not enough that a nurse can follow a list of tasks just to get through the day. A nurse must also be able to evaluate if those tasks are contributing to healing or just harming the client further. There are two subcategories under safe and effective care. For the LVN or LPN, the ability to coordinate care is the expectation. This means that you can provide care and collaborate with healthcare team members to facilitate effective client care. This could include collaborating with interdisciplinary team, prioritizing care, managing your resources, advocating for client rights, and upholding your legal responsibilities. For the RN, this category is called management of care. This means not only collaborating care, but also providing and directing nursing care that enhances the care delivery setting to protect clients, family, and healthcare personnel. The second category is safety and infection control. This category assesses your ability to protect clients, family, and healthcare personnel from health and environmental hazards, provide emergency response, prevent accidents, errors, or injuries, use equipment safely, and implement standard and transmission-based precautions. The next category is health promotion and maintenance. This category assesses your ability to provide care directed at promoting a healthy lifestyle as well as preventing disease and its progression for the general and at-risk populations. This include age-appropriate care, prevention and early detection of health problems, general health education to communities, data collection or assessments, teaching learning concepts, and self-care principles. The next category is psychosocial integrity. This category assesses your ability to promote and support the emotional, mental, and social well-being of your clients. This means providing behavior and stress management techniques, considering cultural, religious, and spiritual needs, using therapeutic communication, and encouraging support systems. The last category is physiologic integrity. This category assesses your ability to promote and support physical health and well-being as well as manage disruption in the body systems. There are four subcategories in physiologic integrity. The first subcategory is basic care and comfort. This assesses your ability to perform activities of daily living by promoting comfort care, nutrition, and hygiene. It also addresses problems related to immobility. The second subcategory is pharmacological therapies. This assesses your ability to perform safe administration and monitoring of clients receiving medication and parenteral therapies. It is a must that you can anticipate expected outcomes, adverse effects, and contraindications when providing medication and parenteral therapies. The third subcategory is reduction of risk potential. This assesses your ability to reduce potential complications related to treatments and illnesses. Here, you must demonstrate your knowledge about diagnostic tests and procedures, recognize abnormal assessments, and prevent post-operative complications. The last subcategory is physiologic adaptation. This assesses your knowledge of pathophysiology or disease process and how the body adapts to these changes. This can include topics on fluid electrolytes, acid-base imbalances, and medical emergencies. NCLEX strives to reflect current clinical practice, so every two to three years, you can definitely expect the test plan to be updated. The changes will reflect issues that need to be addressed and emphasized based on current patient care outcomes and how they can be improved. If we take a look at the 2013 NCLEX RN and the 2011 PN test plans, they have increased the percentage of questions in safe and effective care category. 
for the NCLEX PN pharmacologic and parenteral therapy category was increased as well. This change addresses the medication errors occurring at the LPN and LVN level. The NCLEX test plan is a great guide in planning for your review. Attend our next review class to see examples of questions that fall under each category and we will coach you on how to answer questions based on the NCLEX category. Stay tuned for our upcoming NCLEX review concepts in minutes where we will discuss computer adaptive testing.